Welcome back to the Cycling Tips YouTube channel. I am Cycling Tips' head of tech, James Huang, and we are taking a look today at Lightspeed's newest gravel bike, the Watcha. Lightspeed says that the Watcha kind of pushes the boundaries of what you might expect from a titanium frame. Yeah, looking at it from a distance, it looks pretty traditional. You have a kind of standard double diamond format. Doesn't look all that crazy. TIG welded construction, you know, no insanely wild tube shaping. Looks pretty straightforward. When you look a little bit closer, however, that's when you start to see some of the details and differences. Speaking of that tube shaping, I mean, Lightspeed's done some pretty cool stuff up around the seat cluster here. If you are familiar with Cannondale's carbon fiber road frames, you'll notice that this actually looks a lot like a lot of the recent Cannondale's in the sense that the top tube gets super wide up at the seat tube, and then the seat stays are joined, you know, pretty broadly spaced up here. So it's really a nice, a nice little flowy design feature here. Lightspeed is also taking advantage of that from a functional standpoint uh, with the routing on this particular setup in that the rear derailleur line on this bike runs through the top tube, around the seat tube, and then down the seat stay. So pretty nice little detail there. Other cool things are you have a engraved and color filled in logo right on the head tube. So there's no head tube badge. That logo is just engraved right in there. It's pretty, pretty neat. Um, you've got these super tidy little CNC machined dropouts that look super slick, very clean. This being Lightspeed's latest gravel bike, you also go up in tire clearance and drivetrain compatibility. So the way that they've done that is by using a CNC machined titanium chainstay plate up on the drive side chainstay. And that allows for a narrower section than what you can get from a regular full tubular chainstay. So that's pretty neat to see as well. It's usually something that you more often see on kind of like really expensive custom bikes, but good to see that in a production setup here. So this is a production bike. It's not fully custom. Um, but that said, it is a made in USA titanium frame that in and of itself kind of makes the watch you feel a little more special than a mass produced, you know, carbon or aluminum setup. Despite the fact that it's a production frame, Lightspeed does offer a surprising amount of options for this thing in terms of bottle mounts. You can get the third bottle mount under the down tube, which we have here. You can add on the top tube feed, uh, feedback mount, which we have on this bike as well. Uh, front and rear fender mounts come standard. You can add a rear rack mount this bike comes with a Press for 30 bottom bracket shell. You can upgrade to a threaded T47 setup, which I personally would recommend. Uh, another nice thing you can get, you have three different choices in cable routing. You can go with DI2 specific, internal through the frame. You can go with uh, internal mechanical, which is what this bike is. You can also go with external mechanical, where everything is just clamped to the underside of the down tube if you want the ultimate in serviceability that maybe might not be as clean looking as some of the other stuff, but in terms of doing some you know, regular maintenance, that sort of thing, that's probably the way to go. Another cool add-on that you can get on this bike, uh, Lightspeed offers its own titanium seat post, which we have on this sample here. Uh, that uses an NV aluminum cradle up top. Uh, fairly modest upcharge for that, not too bad. Seems pretty reasonable for what really kind of caps off the bike here. Etched logos come standard on this bike, so there's no paint. There's no you know, decals to wear off or anything. If you do want a little bit more color, you can go with colored vinyl decals, essentially. Uh, you know, it brightens it up a little bit if you'd like. Personally, I think a lot of people looking at a titanium bike are kind of looking more at the durability aspect. So to me, I feel like the etched logos are gonna make more sense. As I said, this is Lightspeed's latest gravel bike. So as you'd expect, you can kind of push the boundaries a little bit more in terms of tire clearance. Lightspeed says you can run up to a 700 by 45 tire on this setup or a 650 by 53. Uh, the claimed frame weight for a medium is 1,595 grams. And this bike, as you see it here, built up with Campagnolo Eckhart, it weighs 8.93 kilos or about 19.69 pounds. Pretty good. Uh, retail price for the frame set, frame and fork, is $3,100 to start. Uh, there are a variety of upgrades you can get. You can also go with custom geometry too for an extra $600 US. So that's a nice little thing that you can get that a lot of production titanium companies just don't offer actually. So Lightspeed does offer the Watcha in a bunch of complete builds. This bike here comes with Campagnolo's one by Eckhart Group, uh, Spinergy GXX aluminum clincher wheels, uh, FSA and Lightspeed finishing kit. This bike, as you see it here, would be a little over 6K US. So in addition to that durability and longevity aspect for titanium frames and the look, people looking at a titanium frame, especially a gravel frame, I'd say a lot of them are going to be going after that sort of you know, classic titanium feel. 
And while that sort of thing isn't necessarily automatically inherent to the material itself, I will say after riding this bike for quite a while that this bike, I would say, is pretty much quintessential titanium in terms of how it rides and feels. Uh, it helps that Lightspeed has gone with a mix of you know, subtle shaping, slightly oversized tubing. You know, they've done quite a lot in terms of the you know, wall thicknesses and that sort of thing. I mean, they don't really just go ahead and call it butted tubing, but it is butted tubing. Um, when you combine all that together, what you get is you have this really nice kind of sprightly feel when you put down the power. It does feel stiff and efficient, but it doesn't feel too stiff. Uh, there's a certain amount of flex to it, like just enough to make it feel nice and super lively. It's also a very comfortable bike, as you would expect from Titanium. Uh, this Titanium seat post may help a little bit, hard to say, but overall, I mean, there, there is kind of like a little bit of buzziness to it. You don't get that super damped quality that you get with a lot of carbon bikes, so you do feel a lot, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's, it's in no way harsh or, at all. Um, again, like you said, you kind of get that just a little bit of flex, get that precise handling up front, that really nice stout feel when you put down the bottom bracket, uh, when you put power through the bottom bracket, it's a really nice combination. And it is, again, exactly what you want and expect and you know hope for when you're buying a titanium frame. In that sense, Lightspeed, I would say, has absolutely nailed it, which you kind of hope for considering that they've been doing this for 35 years now. So if they don't, you know, if they don't have a handle on what titanium should feel like in a bike, then I'm not really sure who would. In terms of the geometry, it's unfortunately a little bit more of a mixed bag, at least in my opinion. So if you look at gravel bike geometry lately, you can see that there are a lot more kind of like mountain bike, a lot more mountain bike influence playing into the numbers these days with a lot of kind of longer front ends, shorter stems, slightly slacker head tube angles, that sort of thing. The reason why you're seeing a lot of that is because it works quite well. This light speed, however, is definitely more on the traditional end of things. So a few months ago, I tested a DaVinci Hatchet Carbon, which I consider to be just about as good as modern gravel geometry gets. That bike was a size small. This is a medium watcha. But despite the difference in size, that DaVinci still had a nine millimeter longer front center, which is the difference between uh, the distance between the bottom bracket and the front axle. And it had a 13 millimeter longer reach, which is the horizontal distance between the bottom bracket center and the top of the headset. How does that manifest out when you're riding? Uh, to me, I feel like this bike, you know, the weight bias to me feels a little bit further forward than I would prefer, ideally. I mean, I did request a pretty long stem from, from Lightspeed, just given the stack and reach dimensions. I ended up switching to a slightly shorter one for a lot of the testing. But even then, I mean, the bike feels a little bit short up front in terms of kind of like the, the, the rider compartment. But that said, you know, it's a little bit short up front, but it's still a little bit long in the back. So you still kind of have, you almost kind of feel like instead of being more centered in the bike, that the kind of more of the bike is behind you. Uh, relative to that Da Vinci, that bike feels like you're kind of more like centered between the wheels. It feels a little bit more stable. It feels a little bit more confidence inspiring, I feel like. So in that sense, I mean, I, I love the traditional look and feel of titanium. Not so big on the traditional geometry of this frame, however. You know, one other thing to note too, I don't have particularly big feet. I'd run like size 43 shoes. This is a medium. These tires are 700 by 43 Panaracer Gravel King SKs. Not particularly big. They do measure exactly 43 millimeters on these rims. I have toe overlap on this bike. Not a huge amount of toe overlap, but I still have toe overlap. It's the sort of thing where, you know, I'm much more tolerant of overlap on road frames, uh, just because I do really value that kind of shorter wheelbase and that really good agility that, that you want on a road bike, uh, particularly a road racing bike. I'm a lot less tolerant of it on a gravel bike, however, because there is a lot more low speed maneuvering involved and you do, you, know, you just end up hitting your feet on your front wheel more than is ideal. And there are certainly some technical situations where that can result in a crash. So definitely not a big fan of that. As I mentioned, however, Lightspeed does offer custom geometry for this bike. Uh, it does cost an extra $600, but if you like everything else about this bike, I think that might be something well worth considering, especially if you are a fan of modern mountain bike geometry or modern gravel bike geometry. Uh, some other quirks with this frame. Uh, if you ride in a lot of muddy conditions, there's a little bit more kind of, of a shelf, so to speak, behind the bottom bracket where debris can build up. Uh, I did do a couple of you know, reasonably muddy rides on this bike, nothing too crazy. Uh, and there was quite a lot of dirt built up behind the seat tube on this bike. So I would prefer to see a little bit more room. 
So in terms of clearance in general, as far as the tires go, I mean, Lightspeed does say that you can run a 700 by 45, and I think they're being pretty conservative there because again, these are 700 by 43s, and there is easily nine millimeters of room all around anywhere you look on this frame, either at the fork crown or at the seat stays or chain stays. So if you were to run a 45, you'd still have you know, eight millimeters of room all around. So you can push it a little bit more depending on what your tolerance is for you know, tire rub and you know, whether you expect to be riding in muddy conditions, that sort of thing. So something to think about, you can go bigger. As I mentioned earlier, you can have your choice of three different riding setups. Uh, this is the internal mechanical stuff. And while it is generally quite clean, it is still a little bit weird in the sense that Lightspeed runs quite a big guide tube down the down tube on this bike. Uh, in fairness to Lightspeed, this thing is set up so that you can run an internal dropper and front and rear derailleurs. And on this bike, since I only have this rear brake and a rear derailleur on here, this oversized tube that they run through the down tube looks a little bit weird because it's a 10 millimeter internal diameter. And that hose is quite small. It's maybe only like four or five millimeters in diameter. So it just seems like, it just seems, looks a little awkward, but that is something that you can take care of at the ordering process. So not really a huge deal, but it is something to, to make note of. As far as the routing goes, it is also important to note that it's not really a convertible setup. I mean, there is some flexibility. This bike here, like I said, it's set up for primarily internal mechanical. You can run electronic if you want to, but then you still have that vestigial tube running through the down tube. That's already bigger than it needs to be. Uh, you know, you, you just kind of end up with some extra ports and housing fittings and that sort of thing. It's just something to keep in mind. It would be nice to see fully convertible riding with maybe like, you know, bolt-on stops, that sort of thing, so you can get rid of all the stuff that you don't need, but not really that big of a deal. In terms of the spec, I mean, Lightspeed does offer this bike in a bunch of different build packages. As I mentioned already, this one came with the Campagnolo Eckhar 1x13 setup. And I've now ridden this uh, group set on three different bikes. And I will say the more I ride it, the more I like it because it is lightweight, it is easy to service, there's no batteries to recharge. Uh, but I would say in terms of a one by setup for gravel, Campagnolo has done an excellent job as far as balancing the total spread, the total gearing range, with the individual jumps in between each, uh, each gear ratio. Because you know, they don't keep it steady throughout the range, they kind of vary it a little bit depending on if you are at the smaller end of the scale or the easier end of the scale. Uh, overall, I mean, Camp Campy I think has nailed it. It's, it shifts very well, it shifts very reliably, it's comfortable in the levers. Uh, the brakes, I feel like, of the big three, I still hold the opinion that Campagnolo does the hydraulic disc brakes best. Uh, the pad clearance is quite tight, uh, so you do have to make sure everything is super well aligned and the rotors are straight. However, everything also runs very quietly, even when it's wet. Uh, the lever feel is fantastic. It's nice and powerful. I mean, it's pretty much spot on there aside from the clearance. These Spinergy GXX wheels are pretty interesting because they run kind of fiber composite spokes instead of metal ones. It does seem to lend to the overall ride quality of this bike. I did swap to some more conventional wheels with metal spokes. It did kind of firm things up a little bit, not so much that it overrides that sort of inherent, really inherently good ride quality of this frame. Um, but if you're looking for a super smooth ride, these Spinergies look like they might be a good way to go. I will have a separate review of these coming up soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I do wish the rear hub engaged a little bit quicker, but that's not really that big of a deal unless you're in a lot of really super technical situations. Last thing on the spec front that I want to talk about, I can't say I'm a big fan of this FSA handlebar. I mean, I personally really like long reach uh, and deep drop, uh, drop handlebars on my road bikes. Not as big a fan of them on the gravel bikes, uh, mainly because I don't really see the need to kind of get that low or that far forward on this. And in this particular setup, I feel like that sort of thing kind of contributes to the kind of more like the front heavy feel of this bike. Um, the bike is, you know, it's, it's still agile, but again, it just feels a little bit unbalanced front to back to me anyway. I would like to see that light speed go with a compact bend on this bike. But again, if you're building this bike up from, from a frame set up, which you have the option to do, uh, or when you or go through the ordering process with Lightspeed, I think you do have some flexibility as far as you know, some of the component specs. So tread carefully there. All right, so overall, what do I think about this Watcha? If you are after a US made titanium gravel frame, there honestly aren't a whole lot of options out there, at least certainly not in this price range. It is important to note that this bike, if you're looking at you know, comparing it to like a Moot or a Mosaic or something like that, this Watcha is quite a bit less expensive, even when you factor in the custom geometry. So, uh, you know, Lightspeed has a long history in building titanium frames. Their reliability seems like it's pretty good. They have a pretty good track record. 
so you know if you after that longevity and durability and sort of that you know kind of like forever bike sort of mentality of a titanium setup this would be a really good way to go if you're okay with that kind of tall stack and short reach geometry a lot of people are just to be clear then there's not really a whole lot you need to worry about if you're not then you will want to pony up for that extra custom geometry but again it is an option so that is good to see otherwise there is an awful lot to like here the bike seems well made it rides again rides fantastically it looks really good it's super fun to pedal it's fast uh, you know i really don't have a whole lot of complaints as far as those core attributes uh, you know a little bit of a longer front end would be would be ace light speed if you're listening maybe you can consider a geometry variation then you kind of would hit it out of the ballpark in this thing so those are my thoughts on the light speed watch yeah Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss another video from Cycling Tips. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. Make sure you check out the written review on cyclingtips.com so you can get the full details and rundown on this bike. And until then, we'll see you next time.